This is the fourth video of solving linear equations. What we're doing today is we're looking at uh, solving equations with fractions. So the type of fractions that we've uh, we've got are either two thirds x is equal to four, something something like that, which is relatively simple compared to some of the other work that we may have that uh, could be featured, like uh, what we have here with two separate fractions with. Uh, with a fraction on the other side of the, the equal sign as well. So we're going to work through from this type of question through to this type of thing that's here. And this is what you'll be working on once we once we leave this video. Right, so, so the, the aim that we're going to be looking at uh, for to work these out today is we're going to try and remove the denominators of the fractions, which converts the, uh, the, the complex equation into a more easy uh, equation to solve, i.e. one without fractions. <clears throat> The steps that we're going to be looking at uh, to solve the fractions um, are going to be, these equations are going to be, one way that we could do it is find the lowest common multiple of the denominators and multiply both sides, or everything that we've got, by that number. Or we could uh, multiply each side uh, by the first denominator, so that's the number on the bottom, then by the next number on the bottom, and then by the next number that's on the bottom. So that's another option. We'll probably go and do some of that there, okay? We'll also, uh, could be cross multiplying. It's one way that I like doing it, but uh, what we'll be doing today is we'll be doing the same thing to each side. So we're gonna be multiplying by denominators uh, today. And another way that we would do it if we have fractions on both sides, like this here, we could gather these two fractions together as a single fraction, and then we would go and do either cross multiplying or multiplying it by the denominators. So there's a couple of options that we've got here. But uh, what I'm going to be doing today is just uh, trying to remove the denominators and work out uh, from there and solve it. Right then, let's go for our first examples. OK, here's the first ones that are coming here. Right, half x is equal to three. So that's like a half of something is equal to three. So I, I guess we could uh, we could take a stab at what that answer really would be. But if I look at the process that we're going to follow, what we're going to do is the same thing to the left as we do to the right to try to work out an answer for this here. So if I've got a half of something, well, I'm multiplying by a half, but uh, I could think of that as dividing by two when I'm uh, taking a half of something. So if I want to get rid of that two that's on the bottom, I'm going to multiply both sides by two. So what I'll do is I'll go for two times this side here. And on this side here, I'll multiply that by two as well. Okay, so two times a half is one. Or what we'll find out when we do this type of work, that we multiply by the two, these twos will cancel out. Okay because that will give us two over two, and two divided by two is just one. So that just leaves us with x on the left-hand side. Three times two will be six. So I hope that's the answer that you were thinking of. Uh, a half of something equals three, so the answer x is gonna be equal to six, okay? So doing the same thing to the left-hand side as we do to the right-hand side, or doing the same thing to everything is what we're trying to look at in these questions here. Right, so if I look at B, what we've got is we've got half x is equal to three fifths. Now, what we could do there is do cross multiplication. If we wanted, we could find the lowest common multiple, which would be the two times the five or the two and the five would give us the 10. We'd multiply by 10 and that would flatten out the uh, equation instead of having fractions. But what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to just do multiplying by the first denominator. So I'm going to multiply everything by 2. So let's go and do that. So 2 times this side and 2 times that side. Okay. So remember what I was saying, if we're multiplying by 2 and there's a 2 on the bottom there, then 2 divided by 2 is 1. So these are going to cancel out. So that leaves me just with x on that side there. Uh, when I'm multiplying uh, a fraction by 2, remember it's only the numerator that I'm multiplying. Because we multiply straight across when we're working with fractions, if you remember your fractions work. Or you could even imagine that uh, the number 2 is 2 over 1. And you just multiply straight across when we're multiplying fractions. So that would give us 6 on the top, 5 on the bottom. So 6 fifths would be my answer. I'll just leave it like that because that's a top heavy fraction and I'm fine with that answer that's there. 
Okay, I've got a 6x is equal to 3 over 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by 6, okay? And that should, that should sort it out from there. So left-hand side, I'll multiply by 6. The right-hand side, I'm multiplying that by 6 as well. Okay, so remember what we can see here is the sixes are going to cancel out. It leaves me with one X on this side here. If I multiply three times six, it will give me 18. And remember, six over one, if you think about it, two times the one is going to give us two. I can simplify that down because 18 divided by two will give me an answer of nine. And that's one way I can try to solve these equations here. Okay, doing the same thing to the left. Uh, same thing to the right, or if there's three things, I must do the same thing to everything. Right, let's have a look at D. Okay, so a more complicated type of equation than the ones we've dealt with before, but what we'll do is the same type of thing, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and get rid of that 4 from there by multiplying everything by 4. So the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to say that that's in a bracket, and I'm times it by four. So it's four times this here, and I'm doing four times this side as well here. So what we've got left here is I can cancel these fours out because I've got a four on the top and a four on the bottom, or four divided by four is one. So on the left-hand side, I've got x minus three, and on the right-hand side, I've got four, because that's one times four, all over two times one is two, okay? So remember, when we're multiplying, we just multiply the numerator there, okay? So this one here is going to work out quite simple for us because 4 over 2 is just 2, because 4 divided by 2 is 2, and then all I need to do is my equation work that we've done before. I don't want a minus 3 there, so I'm going to add 3 to that side. I'll add 3 to the right-hand side. So x is going to be equal to, because that cancels out, 5. Okay, so x equals 5. Right, let's look at E. For E, I've got uh, Y plus 1 on the bottom line. Sometimes it might be in a bracket, sometimes not. But uh, when we're doing this, we'll think about it as being in a bracket. So I'm going to multiply both sides by Y plus 1. Okay, so I'm going to multiply this side here by Y plus 1. We're times in that there. And I'll multiply this side by Y plus 1. Remember, it's in the bracket. Okay. Remember what happened over here. We cancelled the fours out because that's what we were trying to do to get rid of this. So I'm going to cancel that out and that out, which leaves me with a six on the left-hand side. And on this side, it leaves me with four with a bracket y plus one. Okay. Now, if we remember how we did our solving equations with brackets, I'm going to multiply this bracket out first of all. So 6 is equal to 4y plus 4. What I'm then going to do is I'm going to try and get the y terms to the left-hand side. Okay, so I'm going, to multi I'm going to subtract 4y from this side here, which will get eliminate that, get rid of it. And I'll take 4y away from that side. So whatever I do to the right-hand side, I'm doing to the left-hand side. Okay, so I've got 6 minus 4y is equal to... And that's just going to be eliminated there. And I've got a 4 on the right-hand side. What I'll now do is I want to get rid of the 6 from there. I don't want that on the left-hand side. So I'm going to subtract 6 from here. If I do it to the left, I must do it to the right. So what I've got is I've got minus 4y. And that's going to be equal to, so 4. And uh, taking away 6 is going to give us uh, minus 2, or negative 2. I'm then going to divide both sides by minus 4. What that gives me is an elimination here, which leaves me with y is equal to, and I've got two negative signs, so it's going to be a positive answer. So I've got 2 over 4, and then I know that that's going to simplify down. If I divide top and bottom by 2, it will give me y equals a half. Right, we're going on to f. Okay, so f, now this is the first one that we've got three kind of parts to the equation that we've got. Uh, one's a fraction part, the others are not. So what we'll do is we'll just multiply throughout by the 4. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do 4 times this side, 4 times that. I'm going to do 4 times this side here. I'm going to put that in the bracket like that. 
and I'm going to times this one here by 4. So everything I've got, everything, I'm multiplying by that denominator that's on the bottom there. Now what will happen is we should get rid of the fraction here. So 4 times 2x will give me 8x. So I've got 8x here. Remember, the reason why we're multiplying by the 4 is to eliminate that with this one here. So these two here eliminate. And what I've got is I've got a minus sign that's sitting there. And I've got that in a bracket, 3x minus 1. Okay. On the right-hand side, 4 times 4 is 16. So now I've, uh, I've eliminated the fractions, and all I'm working with is um, a straight or a kind of flattened equation. I'm going to multiply the bracket out, and remember that negative sign there is a minus, and it's a minus 1 or a negative 1 we're multiplying by. Let's go and do that multiplying bracket out first. So it's going to be minus 3x, so that's that times that. Then I've got minus 1 times minus 1 will give me a positive 1, so be careful with that one, and that will give me 16 that's sitting on the end there. I'm going to gather these numbers up. So 8x minus 3x will give me 5x plus 1 equals 16. I don't want this number here. I want that on the right hand side really. So I'm going to take one away, which will cancel that out. And what I've got is I'm going to take one away from that side. So at least with 5x is equal to 15. Then we're dividing by 5, which leaves me with x because that eliminates these and x is equal to 3. Okay so there's there's one way of doing this type of work. Right so let's go to the next question. Right so what I've got here is another three part thing. I've got two fractions okay and I've got a non-fraction part of the, the side here. So let's see, so what I could do is I could multiply by the lowest common multiple, which would be 6, would be the most efficient way of doing this, um, but I'm not going to do that this time, I'm going to multiply throughout by 3 first of all, just to see how it would work out if we go for that denominator first, then this one next, let's see what happens. So I'm going to multiply everything by 3, so I'm going to do 3 times that, I'm going to go for 3 times that, and I'm going to go for 3 times that there. Okay, 3 times this part. So everything gets times by 3, multiplied by 3. Remember, times by 3 gets rid of these two here. So that leaves me with 2x there. So that's me flatten that one out. I've got minus 15 all over 6. And here I've got 6x. What I'll then do is to get rid of this uh, part of the fraction, I'm going to multiply throughout by 6. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll do 6 times this one here. 6 times this one here, and 6 times this bit here, okay? Let's see how that works out. So that'll give me 12x. So remember, I'm multiplying by 6 to try to eliminate the fractions. So there it is there. Or it could be 90 over 6 would work out to be 15 as well. So that's going to give me minus 15, and that's equal to 36x, okay? From, from there, what I'll do is, usual way of solving the equations, I'm going to try and get rid of the, uh, the minus 15 that's there by adding 15 on to make it 0. But if I do it on the left hand side, I must do it on the right. So that leaves me with 12x is equal to 36x plus 15 because that's eliminated there. I'm going to subtract 36x from this side and I'll subtract 36x from that side. So that gives me minus 24x. And that is eliminated is equal to 15. What I'll then do is I'll divide by minus 24, both sides. What that leaves me with, once we eliminate that, gives me x is equal to, so I've got minus, it's a minus sign because I've only got one minus, and it's 15 over 24. But I can simplify that down a bit further if I divide the top and bottom by 3. That'll give me minus 5 all over 8. So x is equal to minus 5 over 8. For h, right? So for h, we've only got one fraction part here. So if I just multiply everything by 2, it should sort things out for me to make it a bit easier to work. So I'm going to multiply this part by 2. I'll multiply this one by 2. And I'll multiply this part by 2, okay? Right, so 2 times 3x is going to give me 6x. 2 times 1 is just 2, so that'll be plus 2. Remember, we're multiplying by 2 to allow us to eliminate the fraction. 
and that allows us with an x minus 5 that's left there. What I'll then do is I'll uh, get rid of this 2, so I'll subtract 2 from both sides. So that gives me 6x, that's eliminated, and that's x minus 7. I'm then going to subtract x from the right and x from the left. So that gives me 5x is equal to, so they're eliminated there, and that's minus 7. So x is equal to minus 7, oops, minus 7 over 5 if I divide both sides by 5. Okay, because that eliminates that, it gives us an x, and that gives us minus 7 over 5. And finally, for the last one that we have here, what we'll do with this one is that we'll, um, we could uh, multiply by 10, and that would work out. You know, and you should try that as well, and try and work out the best way for yourself. I'm going to multiply everything by 2 first of all, okay? So 2, I'm going to go 2 times this one and 2 times this side here. So that's the three things I'm multiplying by 2. reason why we're doing the 2 is to eliminate that. So it gives me an x that's there. Minus 2, okay, for that one. And what I've got there is I've got 2, 3 minus x, all over 5. What I'll now do is I'll multiply everything by 5. So I'm going to go 5 times this part, 5 times this part, and I'm going 5 times this part here as well. So that gives me 5x. 5 times x is 5x. Minus 10. And remember, I multiplied by 5 to get rid of these two things there, which leaves me with 2 and 3 minus x inside the bracket. So here we go. We've got rid of the fractions, and all we're going to do now is multiply out the brackets and solve from there. So 5x minus 10 is equal to 6 minus 2x. First thing, I'm going to add on 10 to that side. Add on 10 to this side, which gives me 5x is equal to 16 minus 2x. I'm going to subtract 16 from that side. Oops, no, I'm not. I'm going to add 2x to that side. And I'll add 2x to that side. Okay, so if I add 2x to that, that gives me 7x on this side. Over here, that gets eliminated, and that just leaves me with 16 that's there. I'll then divide by 7 on both sides. It eliminates the 7s, which leaves me with x is equal to 16 over 7. And uh, that's the... Uh, the working with uh, fractions, solving equations with fractions. So really what we've done now is we've uh, worked on a number of uh, videos so far. As we've seen, this is the fourth one. And what we've done so far is we've uh, we've worked a process. So we know a process that we do something on one side, we need to do it to the other. Um, we can, we, we've, we've worked with our knowledge of integers, decimals, and uh, now with uh, fractions. So that's the one that we worked on mainly there. We're also using uh, algebraic expressions by expanding brackets to, to solve the equations. And the next one that we're going to be looking at is solving inequalities. So hopefully things are going well with uh, your solving uh, equations. And um, good luck with the exercise that I'll give you to continue the work today on this topic.